In addition to controlling video kiosk playback order, you can schedule at what time during the day your content is displayed. In this video, I'm going to discuss the scheduling options you have. Then we'll talk about how to decide which scheduling option is right for you. Let's get started. When Video Kiosk runs, it will play your media files, called a content loop, in the order you specified in a loop until you tell it to stop. But in addition to controlling the playback order, you can also schedule the time of day when your content loop is displayed. You can use any one of the following methods, using the Android Calendar on each device, using Google Calendar, or using an XML schedule file using the Android Calendar on each device. When using the Android Calendar on the Android device, you'll need to add the schedule events and make any changes on each of your Android devices individually. This requires physical access to each device, but doesn't require internet access. This scheduling option is a good choice if you don't plan to change the schedule very often, have a small number of devices, and you have easy access to your devices. Using Google Calendar you can have multiple Android devices share the same Google Calendar. You enter the schedule as events in Google Calendar and then configure each device to use that calendar. To modify the schedule, you just need to make the changes in Google Calendar and all the devices will automatically switch to the new schedule. This option doesn't require physical access to each device, but does require that each device has internet access. This scheduling option is a good choice if you plan to change the schedule often, have a large number of devices, or if you don't have easy access to your devices. For instance, because they are distributed throughout the country. Using an XML schedule file. To use this scheduling option, you create an XML schedule file and deploy it on each device. You can have multiple Android devices share the same schedule. To modify the schedule, Update the XML schedule file and either copy it to each device using a USB cable or update them using Video Kiosk's cloud update feature. In your project, some scheduling options may be easier to use than others, so keep the requirements in mind when deciding on a scheduling option. For example, if you plan to change the schedule every two weeks and your devices are installed in theaters across the country, Choose a scheduling option that doesn't require physical access to each device. To see the requirements for each option, consult the Video Kiosk User's Manual. You'll find the link below. Here are five things to consider when deciding on a scheduling option. Number one, do the Android devices running Video Kiosk have internet access? If your devices don't have internet access, you still have scheduling options. These two options require internet access. These two don't. Number two, do I have easy physical access to the Android devices running video kiosk? If your Android devices are distributed to a lot of different locations, choose a scheduling option that doesn't require physical access. These two options require physical access. These two don't. Number three, how many Android devices do I have to update? Even if your Android devices are easy to get to, it's still going to be a big job to change the schedule on them if you have to do each by hand and there are many devices. If you have a large number of Android devices, choose a scheduling option that updates over the internet so it does all the work instead of you. These two options update over the internet. These two don't. Number four, how often will I change the schedule? If you are planning to change the schedule frequently, choose the scheduling option that updates over the internet. These two options update over the internet. These two don't. Number five, is the schedule recurring? The XML schedule file option is designed to schedule recurring events. For example, every Tuesday at 7 till 8.30 p.m. If instead, your schedule includes a lot of scheduled events that don't recur on a regular basis, such as guest speakers or flash sales, use one of the calendar options instead. These two options are designed to work for regularly recurring events.
Here are some examples of how to use scheduling. Valerie runs a coffee shop in a mall food court, and she uses video kiosk to display her menu on an Android TV. She set it up to display the menu during mall hours. She wanted a solution that didn't depend on internet access. And if she ever needs to update her schedule, she uses a wireless keyboard to open the Android calendar on the Android TV, and then she can update it. Courtney runs a business education business, and giving seminars is a big part of what she does. She uses digital signage to provide general information as well as to promote her business. She uses the Google Calendar option and wireless internet. She schedules playback to turn on during breaks and to turn off during instructional time. She wanted a solution that allows her to easily change the playback schedule on all of her Android devices so she can set up the schedule for the entire seminar and have the kiosks running without requiring her intervention. Benjamin works for the IT department of a university that has screens running digital signage throughout the campus. He scheduled them all to run only during school hours, which are the same every weekday and different for Saturdays and Sundays. He uses Video Kiosk's XML schedule option. There are hundreds of screens and it would be a lot of work to update each screen individually with a USB cable. So he uses Video Kiosk's cloud update feature and updates over the internet. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to use each scheduling option, check out the other tutorials in this series. And for printed step-by-step -step instructions on how to use all of Video Kiosk's features, download the Video Kiosk User's Manual. You'll find the link below. If you found this video helpful, please leave us a comment.